All right, so we're on another two mile. Uh, let's see here. Uh, I'm starting the video a little late. I decided, hold on a second, take a couple breaths here. I decided that uh, today I felt like actually jogging some of it, so I did a bit of a short jog. I wouldn't say it was long, but I did do a bit of a jog. So, uh, I've always really appreciated uh, older athletes just for the, uh, uh, well, I relate to them because I'm old or older when it comes to just say competition, martial arts, uh, or any kind of competition sport. I'm, I'm old according to that criteria. Uh, I am 22 years past my prime and I'm not talking the beginning of my prime I'm talking about the end of it uh, but I still plug along and I always will so I consider my prime uh, as far as physical conditioning and things to that nature goes I'm not talking about skills because uh, to me skills are kind of interpretational and it really depends on what you're talking about and I'll say this in a lot of ways in a lot of ways I'm better than I was in my prime uh, that's that's one of the real drawbacks of uh, having the ability to do something uh, skill wise and then uh, having a negative as far as uh, talking about age and things to that nature I, I think that and most people were this way even if you're not a professional fighter or ever inspired to be anything like that I think that the older you get the more wise and skills you uh, wise you are and the more skills you obtain and I know for myself I look back and say if I had the skills that I have today and I had the physical fitness and the conditioning I had in my prime now there's a combination but very rarely does life give you both of those at the same time very rarely do you get the the youth uh, and the uh, overall skills and, and wisdom at the same time. Usually you get the youth first, and then once that's dried up, that's when the experience and wisdom hits in. And then you end up like me, who uh, thinks about what would have happened if I had the experience and the skill sets that I have now but in my body 30 years ago you know that sort of thing so physically uh, I, I have and for a very very long time have considered and I believe I am correct that as far as physical conditioning goes uh, my prime was age 25 to 35 25 was the beginning of it and uh, 35 was the ending of it. Now, maybe not a, a complete drop off, but that's where it started to really decline. And now I'm at 57. And although I don't have the, the physical body that I had 30 years ago, uh, in a lot of ways, I'm, I'm better off now than I was back then. If, if only I had that body. <laughs> so I was, uh, as I was talking earlier, uh, I've always kind of gravitated towards older uh, fighters, especially in my later years, uh, simply because 
I kind of identify. Now, as far as the UFC goes, Randy Couture was a huge positive influence on me. I just very much enjoyed seeing someone of his age uh, not only compete, but dominate a sport that is actually for young people. I mean, let's just be honest. Most, if not all, combat sports uh, are, are, are designed for the younger people. I mean, if you hit 30 years old in a combat sport, you're freaking old. Uh, and I didn't have my first fight. I'm not talking pro fight. I mean amateur fight. I didn't have my first amateur fight till I was 35 years old. I didn't stay amateur very long. I got in, got a couple fights, and uh, I'm like, yep, that's it. That's for me. Let's go. And, and uh, went pro. Uh, this video isn't about that, so I'm not, I'm not going to do that. Uh, but Randy Couture was a huge uh, influence, and I really liked him and respected his abilities in the in the cage. Now, there is a saying that you should never meet your heroes because they are destined to uh, not meet to your expectations. Now, I will say this: uh, in my fight career. I got to be around a lot of pro fighters. I got to train with a lot of pro fighters. Uh, you know, I got access to high level and quote unquote famous uh, MMA fighters for a handful of years. And uh, honestly, I've only ever been disappointed once uh, at, at a person and not for skills. It was purely, it was purely on uh, personal, uh, the way they acted and things of that nature. They just didn't meet up to my, what I was hoping for. And that happened to be Randy Couture. Uh, I have great respect for him as a fighter, always will. He, he uh, you know, showed me that uh, there are people of an age that can still do it, and it was a good influence on me, but meeting him and, and hanging out and speaking with him uh, left a lot to desire, unfortunately. But as far as MMA goes, there was a lot of people that I expected would have shitty attitudes, and they were some of the coolest people I ever met. And uh, uh, Nick Diaz is one of them. I I completely thought that he was going to be a total prick, honestly. But I'll I'll be honest. Uh, he was one of the nicest ones ever, and that, that's just the truth. Now, uh, going a little further back in time and jumping to kickboxing in uh, 60s, 70s, and 80s, the two people that come to mind are Joe Lewis and Bill Wallace. Uh, uh, I've, I've got to meet both of them. And I will say this, Bill Wallace is one of the kindest, nicest, gentlest, uh, uh, well-behaved uh, martial artist I've ever met. Uh, I can't say enough of nice things about him. Uh, super respective. He's, he's very educated. He is very willing 
to openly share his knowledge with anyone who wants it. Just one of the kindest, nicest people I've ever met. Then we go to Joe Lewis. Uh, I, I didn't like him at all, and I'll be honest. He, to me, personally, my opinion, he was one of the biggest jerks I've ever met in my life. And that's just a, just a personal opinion. If you're a huge Joe Lewis fan and your experience is different, you know, that's fine, I get it. But just a personal, personal view here. Uh, I met Joe one time and one time was all I cared to meet him. Uh, and I'm, I'm glad that I met him in the circumstances that I did because uh, I had no interest in, in ever meeting him again. Uh, it was at a kickboxing match somewhere between 19, 1993, uh, maybe 92. I better say 92 and 95. Somewhere in there, uh, probably closer to 93, 94, somewhere in there, but just to be on the safe side so that there's no mistakes here. Uh, somewhere between 1992 and 1995 in Fayetteville, North Carolina, uh, I was training in a dojo in Fayetteville at the time and the guy I was training with had accepted a kickboxing match and he was wanting to go watch these fights to kind of start preparing for it and uh, I was going to help train him so we went and uh, Joe Lewis was there and I chatted with him for a few minutes and, and I'm not kidding uh, the handful of minutes I chatted with him himself and the two or three buddies he had with him the only thing they talked about that whole time was how awesome Joe Lewis was that's it uh, nothing else it was just how awesome Joe was and uh, I don't know I just rubbed me the wrong way I didn't like it I uh, as I said, I met Bill Wallace twice, uh, took two of his seminars, and got to have some really nice chat time with him. And uh, both times, both times we chatted about martial arts, we chatted about just regular everyday life stuff. Uh, he was very attentive to uh, what I was wanting to get out of the seminars. He was very attentive to How to help me get what I was wanting and not one time Out of that entire experience that I had with Bill Wallace both times Did he ever tell me how awesome he was or how great he was or how would I like to uh, fork out three thousand dollars so he could show up to my dojo and and do a seminar not one time did he ever do anything like that now I spoke to Joe Lewis maybe 15 minutes at best and out of those 15 minutes 100% of that conversation was how awesome he was and how I should cash out whatever I had to give to him so that he could come to my dojo and talk about how awesome he was to other people that's it all right well I still got about a half mile left on my walk uh, this video is gonna be a lot shorter than my other two that I've done so far on my two mile walks for several reasons one is I jogged some of this one and I just haven't uh, chatted as much on this one as I did the other two. So we're gonna go ahead and unless there's anything exciting that comes to mind, I think we're gonna be pretty close to done. So I got about another, uh, maybe, well, maybe a quarter of a mile at this point to, to get done. Yeah, it's a quarter of a mile to get done and I'll be finished, so. 
short one today and to be totally honest I still haven't even posted the other two yet so 